I think we know what wins, but Cinque Terre versus Amalfi Coast. Ah. Oh, wow. That's a good... Well, a big question. The Italian coastline. When you hear it, you may think of sipping on an Aperol spritz on your yacht in the Mediterranean. Or in our case, water taxi. Or maybe your thoughts take you to the Italian Riviera. Or maybe you're like me and think it's a curated facade only made for bougie Instagram photos. Do people live in those houses up there or is it just... See, our Google search narrowed us down to the warm toned sunsets in Cinque Terre and the cotton candy skies on the Amalfi Coast. Woo! They have a lot of similarities, like being famous for lemons and both having more stairs than the human body is capable of handling. But perhaps the biggest distinction between the two is that they're on opposite sides of the country, so we went with the obvious choice. Both of them. Cinque Terre, something I needed to see. Because they would, they would compare it to the Amalfi Coast. Cinque Terre has a, has a beautiful identity. We started in Cinque Terre. You may know it from the Pixar movie Luca. Beware of sea monsters. And pirates too. Cinque Terre is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it's Italian for five towns. Monterosso, Fernazza, Cornelia, Manarola, and Rio Maggiore. And they're actually a string of colorful fishing villages. It's on the Italian Riviera, right off the Ligurian Sea, about 100 miles northwest of Florence. And it's not accessible by car, so sadly we had to say goodbye to our baby in Florence. Hi, baby. Oh. Ugh, oh, that was stressful. Because of this, the train system is second to none. You can easily travel to each town within minutes. Or if you're feeling brave, hike the blue path all the way through. That's not us. We made it to Vernazza in the Cinque Terre. We stayed in Vernazza, which is said to be the most picturesque. It's a beautiful cuisine, it's a beautiful tradition of food as well. Great fish over there too. It's a fishing village, so it's, it's very accessible and it feels laid back and like there's a lot of locals here. The pesto, it's where pesto was originated. The food is fantastic. It's also famous for anchovies, focaccia bread, and white wine. The wine trade's always been the main method of livelihood, and long before the fishermen were here, it was inhabited entirely by farmers. I'm originally from Cinque Terre, oh, so oh my gosh, you hit me, you got me. There's one win for Cinque Terre. Did we seriously go this whole way with our suitcase? Yep, and more to go. This is insane. Are you sure? Positive. Oh my god. I can't walk on this. <sighs> we got our workout, that's for sure. We stayed in this classic and cute family owned B&B. I'm five foot three, so you can see how tiny this place is. It's very humid here, so you need the fresh air. These are the luggages we had to just carry. Espresso maker. On to our best feature. They left us champagne. Let's go pop this open. Pinkwaterra. Cheers. Directly below our suite, we found ourselves a private little grotto and our own little slice of paradise. Eating pesto and focaccia bread in their birthplace oh, just feels so right. Soon tourists discovered our spot, so it was on to the next. Here we are in Monterosso. The water is so blue, it looks almost like the Caribbean. It's home to Cinque Terre's biggest beach, so we had to get in and play a little bit. Then it was off to Manarola for the best sunset of our entire lives. And because the sunset took our breath away, I'll leave you with a moment of silence to enjoy it.
it was on to the Amalfi Coast. Oh, it's so blue. The Amalfi Coast is in southern Italy, and it overlooks the Tyrrhenian Sea. It's also a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and is long said to attract jet setters. The people, the food, the sea. It's a mixture. History and, and landscapes, and tradition, culinary traditions, and traditions in general. The crown jewel of the Amalfi Coast is Positano. Instagram hype, the pride, the heart of the Amalfi Coast. We'll see what it's like if it's too Instagrammy and fabulous. Turns out you actually need a crown jewel to afford to stay here, because in peak season the average cost of a hotel runs around $1,000 a night. In our opinion, a little bit overrated and less than glamorous behind the scenes. So we stayed in the neighboring city of Priano, meaning open sea, and it's home to only about 2,000 residents. So. Uh, we decided to make ourselves at home. Pirata is the famous bar here in Praia. I think that's the owner and his wife. Twenty dollars a chair, but there's a price to pay. For paradiso. The man swings. Not for the faint of heart. Lot of steps. We're starting to think romance in Italian means a thousand stairs. We just bought pasta, but why not make some from the grocery store? Coast. That is pro level. As we watched the sunset on our final day on the Amalfi Coast, we wondered if it gave that Cinque Terre sunset a run for its money. Cinque Terre is it's fabulous. It's it's incredible. It's unique. Mm -hmm. But if like if I had a gun here and, <laughs> and I had really to choose, I would say mm, Amalfi Coast for the flavors mm. and the hospitality okay. and people, food. Amalfi <laughs> Coast wins. I know that. I perhaps say that because I'm from here. Our verdict? The stillness of the sea, the tradition of the villages, a little of both came home with us. But we have to say we're partial to Cinque Terre. It's cute with character. Kind of like our little family. Or maybe it's the pesto. And in that case, our compliments to the chef. You're a good chef. Another day, another sea view.